Welcome back to From Brand to Image. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the language of image making. So what exactly does that, does that mean? Images, we can describe images using lots of different terms. And we're going to go through those terms and we're going to see lots of, of examples of those terms. Now you might say, why is it that I need to know all these photographic terms in, in, in order to be able to um, create my creative pitch and sell concepts and ideas to my clients? The answer is very simple. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to visionate. In other words, um, it's, 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 you know, in, in, rather than just envision or have a vision, visionating means that we are actually um, taking from the brand and then creating this, this idea, this concept that we have with all of its different factors, right? Uh, what we need to be able to do is to then communicate that very clearly to our client so that our client understands exactly what it is that we are proposing to do. And next, we need to be able to communicate that to a photographer, to a director, um, in, in order for them to be able to execute the project that we have in mind. So this is, this is the process that we want to be able to go through. So all the language that we're going to learn right now is going to help you do that. So let's look at these, these, these different aspects. The first and most important thing is the focal lengths of, of lenses. Now, why do you need to know the focal lengths of lenses? The reason is very simple. When we have a vision of, a, of, a, of an image or even a shot for a video, we need to know what information we want to have in that shot and what information we want out of that shot. So, so when we talk about composition, focal lengths of lenses is extremely important and I'm going to show you why. Take a look at this particular image. Now what we see here is that wide angle lenses, what we call wide angle lenses, and if you look over here what you'll see is that, is that an 18 millimeter lens, the smaller the number of the lens, the wider the angle. Remember, the longer the lens, in other words, the, the higher the number, the closer we go to our subject. So what happens is with a wide angle lens, when we talk about a wide angle shot, we're going to include all the ambient information that can be um, found in the space, right? And then as we move progressively towards a telephoto lens, like a 120 millimeter or a 200 millimeter, et cetera, what happens is that we are focusing in more and more onto our subject, right? So when we think about images, we need to think, how do I want the image to be? Do I want to have all of the information about the environment that the person is in, or do I want to just focus in very tightly on my subject, right? Okay, so let's look at some examples of focal length lenses. Now you look at this and you say, well, what, what, what focal length might this be? What we see is that we're very close to the subject, and yet we have all of this information. So this is a wide angle shot, right? And you can imagine how different this shot would be if it were not wide angle, if it were, for example, with a telephoto lens where we were zoomed in on a very tight area. We would lose all this information in the sense of the story that this image is giving us, right? Here's another um, example of wide angle. So we see that we, see that we can see very far away uh, the climber that's above us, but by using a wide angle lens, we include this whole story and we see that what this particular story is actually actually about is the fact that the other climber is supporting the climber who is above, right? So by including that, that information, we are more able to tell the story. Now look at this image, which is also wide angle. Look at the force that the car has given. It, it creates almost this sort of bulbous effect on the car, right, by using a wide angle lens. So one of the things that wide angle lenses do is that they distort somewhat the proportions. So the front of the car looks huge in comparison with the back of the car, right? Now one of the things we need to be careful is that when we use wide angle lenses with people, they kind of create a humorous effect, right? They're, they're sort of comical. And so if we get right in towards our sub, to our subject and we use this wide angle lens, what we see is that it creates, it creates this sort of funny aspect. So usually wide angle lenses are not, shot, are not used for shooting beauty photography. Um, because they make people look funny, okay? So what we see here is that we're getting now to a tighter shot, right? So we're, we're no longer in wide angle. We're now in that sort of um, mid-range, um, 50 millimeter, maybe 80, 85 millimeter lenses, right? Where we begin to zoom in on our subject. So this photo we see immediately is less about the environment that she's in than it is about her, 
right? And the other thing that happens is that when you use longer lenses and you begin to zoom in, the background starts to go out of focus. So it really takes our attention to the subject matter, right? And we, as we go tighter and tighter, what we see is that the, the photo, the image becomes more and more intimate. It becomes more about the emotion and much less about the space that the person is in. And even tighter, we have even more of that effect, right? Now, let's, let's move to the next um, <clears throat> term. The next thing we do is we can use lines in telling our stories. Now, how do we use lines in telling stories? By placing lines in the story, we are telling our, our viewer where to look, right? So the image, the image immediately tells us that we are looking off into the distance simply by placing the line in the image. And here, the lines of the building are focusing all of our attention up into that center area. So all of those lines, it's interesting because the, the photo is really less about the buildings and more about the effect that, that this all has. So if we look at this next example, what we see is that the lines in this, in this image are taking our eye through the image. So essentially what we're doing is we're telling the viewer where to look. So this is not as much a story about pipes and, and, and bars as it is about the form that the lines create, right? Now, let's look at shapes. Shapes do exactly the same thing. When we repeat shapes over and over, for example, it becomes a story about the shapes. It's not so much a story about uh, pieces of wood as it, as it is about the effect that all of these shapes have on our eyes and the feeling that that gives us. Let's look at another example. You see this, this roller coaster ride of, uh, of metal, right? And so what happens is these lines, these shapes, what they're doing is they're telling our eye to move through the image, okay? Again, popsicle sticks. This is not as much a story about popsicle sticks it is, as it is about the form that they create by repeating that sh those shapes over and over. Now let's move to forms. Now what's the difference between shapes and forms? Forms are things that imitate shapes that we recognize. So it's not actually the thing itself, but like a representation of the thing, okay? So here we see a woman, but it's not actually a woman, it's a shadow of a woman. And so it evokes that, that response of, we, we recognize what this form is supposed to be, okay? Um, again, we can use repeating forms, um, like in this Kenzo ad, we can see that the, that the form, the body of the woman, mirrors the shape of the bottle, right? So we're using sort of repeating forms, again, to tell a story. So let's look now at, at this image of sand. Now what we see here is that this is not so much a story about the sand um, as it is about the form that the sand creates and this, this feeling of, of waves, right? All right, let's look at textures. Now textures have a have an, an interesting role to play. Usually we play with textures in the backgrounds of our images, right? And so immediately this craggy rock surface gives us that very edgy, um, almost dangerous feel, right? Like it's going to cut us if we touch it. So the texture creates that impression. Whereas if we use a texture of leaves, what we find is that it gives us that sort of very soft, very warm feeling, um, it, which is exactly the opposite of what the rocks communicate. Again, this texture of, of the grass and also the color that, that uh, the, the warmth of the colors gives us that, that sort of nice, soothing, um, intimate feeling, right? Now patterns, when we use patterns, what we do is we're essentially taking one particular um, item and we're re repeating it over and over. And so what happens is that instead of this being the bottom of a swimming pool, it becomes this sort of mosaic this colorful mosaic background, and what it does is it helps to make the pineapple um, leap out of the photo. So it creates, a, it creates this sort of background to um, help the pineapple stand out. So again, patterns. By using these, these, these lines of the lamps, what we're doing is we're, we're t telling the viewer to follow these, this pattern through the photo. Right? So it's communicating that to us. It's telling us where to look. Um, and this, this last photo is, I, I think, an incredible photo, very beautiful. What happens is this, this is not so much about um, the, actual, the actual location as it is about the pattern that the sandstone creates 
for our eyes to see. So we'll be back in the next video and we'll look at some more of these uh, photographic techniques. I'll see you there.